right here we are at Sutherland Entertainment Centre. We've got Nick from the Metal Outfit and Making Supper with me. Uh, they're currently out here uh, touring with Parkway Drive and it's part of the All, of the, all Aussie Adventure Tour. Nick, thanks for having a chat with us. How's, uh, how's the show's been going? Show's been sick so far. Um, Parkway is showing no signs of slowing down. Uh, most of the rooms we've been playing at are packed. A couple have already sold out. Um, yeah, it's been really good. Excellent. So I imagine that you know, you've got support from that. Well, I think we've got a long way to go, but um, yeah, sure. But for more reports, you guys have been killing it. Cool. Yeah, good to know. That's what I've been seeing. So let's talk a little bit about your live, uh, your live rig, and what actually helps you get the uh, sound that you guys are kind of known for. Yeah. Uh, we'll start with you got the ABH uh, amp here. How do you uh, how do you run this? Cool. So um, yeah, we've been using this for a couple of years now, um, both in the studio and live. Uh, so the way we've got it set up is. Uh, I run a uh, digital rig behind all this. Uh, I've got two signals coming out from my Axe uh, So the front of the house guy would receive a, uh, uh, a uh, simulation tone. So you've got an amp and a cab sim running from the Axe running to the front of the house. Um, and then I've got another signal going into the front of the amp which bypasses the amplifier and cabinet sims. Um, so all I'm using from the Axe effects going into the uh, EVH is um, essentially a compressor, um, a overdrive, and maybe a graphics EQ. Um, yeah, so I'm still using, um, we're still using like a, a mic tone out from the EVHs, um, our sound guy likes to blend a uh, mix out of um, yeah digital and a uh, cab tone. So um, yeah, the, uh, the EVH has got a central role in that. Excellent. So I suppose mixing the, um, the digital and the actual tone is something you can come up with in the studio. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. There's uh, there's pros and cons to using both. I mean, obviously, if I had the luxury um, to um, carry these things all around with me, um, interstate and um, overseas, then I definitely would. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, we use what we can get, so, if, you know, if we can use the, uh, if we can use the cab phone, we'll, yeah, we'll do it every time we can. I suppose in a, in a fly in, fly out sort of tour scenario, you guys will quite effective, especially in Australia. Yeah, but have something to take on the run, and on the run, and the other coming, that's right with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So with the amp itself, what, what do you got running with the settings for channel one, two, and three, and which ones you from primarily use? Uh, we only use channel three. Yep. Uh, we don't use cleans, effects, any of that in our music. Yep. Um, and we're a very uh, there's lots of distortion in our music, so um, yeah, channel three is the way to go. Yeah, go. yeah. There's, um, there's no ifs and buts to it. The presence is um, is all the way up to uh, about three o'clock. Um, yeah, Scripting, nice and simple. You screw the mids a little bit there, they're just under, under six, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. Extra right. highs up and you know, gain up around 75%. This is the lot nice and tight. Yep. Excellent. Any, any like secret weapons that you have that you want to let people know about? Or? Secret weapons? Um, look, everything, everything we use is. There's not much to it. There's just one, there's just one tone we use. Um, all our tracks, there's no fancy effects, no cleans. Um, if there's a secret weapon, if, if we had a secret weapon, I'd say it'd be this, honestly. Um, we've been using this for two years now, and um, yeah, no, I'm not looking anywhere else just yet. Um, I, did, I did mean to mention, um, we do tend to chuck our guitars around the stage quite a bit, like we are. Uh, we're guitar slingers, we like to move around a lot, and in the past we've had a lot of um, wireless issues like cables breaking, the transmitter not working properly, and I've actually been really impressed with um, uh, Shaw's GLDX system. Um, it's got like a brick, yeah. so it doubles up, as a, uh, doubles up as a tuner as well, which is really handy. Um, the battery pack, it's the first I've seen um, in the series of Wireless, um, uh, wireless guitar transmitters. The the battery pack is uh, the battery pack uses a lithium battery. So you can just plug it into your computer and charge it from there if you want. 
also again really handy. Yeah. Um, battery life doesn't go anytime soon. Um, and it's built like a brick, so um, I've been using that thing for um, for over a year now without any problem. Uh, yeah, that's, that's good. Nice and you want a big set, comb cutting out. You know, yeah, I just have to muck around with other wireless units or cables. You know, we've got something that's driving this as well. Beautiful. Oh, well, let's quickly uh, have a look at guitars. Let's pick this right. one up a while ago. I've been experimenting with um, six string Telecasters. Uh, I was playing sevens a while ago, and I don't know, I'm not really like, I'm not really vibing it. Um, I'm just, I went back to a six string and just, yeah, seven string guitars, eight string guitars. Not my thing. Um, we're playing in uh, low tuning, drop A. Yep. So conventionally you would be using a seven string guitar, but I've been trying to make things work by uh, just modding the guitar myself, resetting the actions. So um, here we got a, uh, a Fender Special Edition Heavy Metal Telecaster. Uh, originally comes with uh, two Seymour Duncan 59s, which um, I use with my other stuff, but in this case I've modded it a little bit. I've taken a old pickup, a, a Seymour Duncan JB. Um, known for their rich mid-tones. Some people reckon they are quite versatile as well. I like to do a lot of clean stuff at home, so it works for that. Um, so what I have actually running, so the way this works with my rig is uh, because the pickups um, naturally are quite warm, they're really mid-driven, um, I have a thing called a treble compressor which I use to run from the amp. Um, uh, without the treble compressor sounds a bit you know, warm, a bit muddy, because yeah. um, when you're tuning down to A, especially on a six string, you sort of uh, you sort of compromise the brightness out of the tone a little bit, so that's what the treble compressor is for. Um, so the treble compressor will bring out that like bow, bow, you know, you hear it in a lot of gent music, yep. so that's what that's basically, um, uh, that's basically how my rig interacts with uh, my guitar. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, again, like playing A tuning in uh, on a six string guitar. Uh, especially on a 25 and a half inch scale, uh, isn't conventional. But um, I'm seeing more and more guitarists start to um, you know, mold their guitars a little bit in order to make it work. And uh, look, it sounds great. Yeah. Do you split the coils or anything like that with that, or is it just the full humbucker all the time? Just the full humbucker. Yeah. Yeah. The tone still attached, but you don't touch it. Yeah. No. No. Don't touch the tone. Don't touch the tone. I haven't modded it that much yet. Um, but yeah. No. It's, uh, as long as the body's mahogany. Again, I'm all about the uh, mids, about the mid range. Yeah, probably a bit of a nice mid, like, rich mid, mid range sort. Yep, yeah. yep, that's right. Um, going down to low tuning, compromise the uh, the compromising the brightness, and again, yeah, that's where, yeah, that's where I have to tweak up the treble a little bit. That's the secret. That's it. The secret right there, the tone books. That's it. Fantastic. All right, mate. We appreciate your time. Cool. Enjoy tonight. I'm sure it's going to be another cracker show. It'll be a blast. And, uh, we'll move on and see what Lachlan's up to. Awesome. All right, I've got with me uh, Lachlan now. Lachlan, let's uh, have a look at your little rig. It looks pretty uh, pretty impressive here. I can see you're running the EVH uh, head and quad as well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to run us through, uh, through your setup and see how uh, yeah, tricky. Yeah, pretty much. So pretty much the way the signal flow works for us, well, for me anyway, is that uh, just go the guitar straight into the Kemper. Um, Kemper's a unit I've been working with for about three and a half, almost four years now. So it's something that you know has kind of been at the forefront of you know, digital tones ever since it came out. It's a really good way of uh, you know, modeling um, actual amps and taking snapshots of their tones, um, which is really good for whenever we're in the studio. Um, whenever we get a tone that we're really happy with, we can just kind of take a snapshot of that and then we can take it on tour with us. And then the way that we really get that out is we run through the EVH, so I run through the 250, um, and then go through the quad, and these things just sync. They sound absolutely great, especially with the digital tone. It brings back a whole bunch of warmth and a whole bunch of realness to the, to the tone, and it really makes it sound like a lot of people really struggle with digital tones and getting it to translate across live. It's great in the studio, but sometimes it just lacks that that heart and that meatiness to it. Yeah. And the EVH just brings brings it all back and throws it and spits it back out with just this huge aggression. It just sounds like a porn. It's really pissed off. It's really angry. It's exactly what I love to sound like. So. Hey, yeah. What you guys doing? No frills. Yeah. Some butts. That's it. Tone like Nick was saying. You know, you don't stray too much from that. 
Yeah, yeah we, 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 we really try to focus on having a tone that's versatile enough to suit every release we put out, and especially with the new single coming out, which is a bit rockier. Um, we don't really need a lot of different tones, we don't switch between clean, um, we don't really have that many solos, um, so really what we're focusing on is just trying to get that a really mid punchy sound that just peeks through, it can be great with chords, be great with shreddy sort of riffage, and yeah, and this combination for me works really well. Yeah, the tones just hit, hit you right there in the chest. That's it. When, when you're playing in the Yeah, that's it. Uh, I was going to say, any little sort of secret weapons that you have run with your tone that you've been on at any crucial moments of any songs? Oh, look, it pretty much stays the way that it is the whole time, but there are a few little, so there's a few little stomp boxes you can run through the camper, which is pretty much how we use pedals, um, so it's all in this little box, and I've got a few of those, uh, I've got some compressors, EQs, and um, some stomp boxes that I work with. Which I'll leave as the only little secret. Uh, but yeah, fine. yeah. Um, just so it's yeah, they're pretty much the the really things that make the tone um, really unique and signature. And it's what we really need to do, especially when we're using a few different guitars about the set as well to kind of carry that across and make sure that they're all sounding sound level. It's on the amp. Are you really just using one channel all the time as well, same as Nick does? Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty much what we're running on channel two, which is like the more crunchy channel. Yep. Um, and then we. I use quite a lot of presence just so it really boosts it through, um, and it just sounds it sounds great on stage. Just our, our monitors for us, um, just so we know exactly what we're sounding like out there, and it just sounds huge through here. And I'm always the happiest when I'm, my head's right next to there doing sound check. Going, yeah, fuck yeah, there's my tone. Let's see. Yeah, I found that the second channel when I heard all the band playing it tends to have a little bit more grittiness to it, a bit more of a rougher rougher tone than what channel three does. Yep. And um, yeah, certainly I can understand where you're going with that. Yeah, there's a bit more clarity in it for, for us anyway, especially mixing with the, the digital tones and yeah. stuff as well. I suppose we you know you and Nick having using very sort of similar grid, you want to still be able to have a difference in your voice on stage. Yeah, definitely. It's it's about uh, filling out that whole top, that whole tonality as well. So again, between the syncopation between the bass, the kicks, and the guitars yeah. is really important for live music as well. So it's that way that we kind of balance it out. Uh, Nick covered, kind of covers that top end a little bit more. I kind of cover that mid, and then the bass comes in at the bottom with yeah, same thing. Like everything's got its position in the lane. Exactly, and it all gels together. Exactly. Yeah. That's what we want to hear. That's it. Uh, axe wise, what do you got, uh, got over here? Yeah. So axe wise, uh, for a little while I've been using Ibanez. Um, so this is my main baby that I've been using, which is my RGD Prestige Effects ish. Yep. Uh, with a lot of battle scars. Um, I think Nick was saying before we really do like to rely into our live show, so we. We get a lot of scars, both on our guitars and on our, our bodies. Um, but yeah, so this has been a really great guitar for me. It's a seven string, um, just good mid range, a lot of punch. Um, still got just running the, the stock pick which are the V V7 series. Yep. Um, really good seven string. For a lot of our straighty stuff, I do start resorting to a six string as well, um, which is at the moment the Ibanez FR635, which I got about a week before we headed out on tour. Which is. Uh, this new baby in a beautiful sunburst. That's just running core tones, which I haven't been able to swap out yet, because I've got it two days before we were on the road. Right, yep. But um, the core tones are actually doing really well. They've got a good mid in them as well. And yeah, it's just a nice feel to it. Good shreddy, shreddy guitar, uh, good sustain, and yeah, shelves really well, both with the Prestige and then with the yeah, Camper as well, and the EBH. Yeah. yeah, that's I, it. I know you've only had it for a couple of days, but what happens here is this split, is this a three-way or a five-way? Uh, so that's a three-way. Yep. Um, Yep, but yeah, no, no, just it's just three ways. But um, pretty simple. Um, don't really mess with much. Like as you can see with the other prestige swaps, got a volume knob. Yep. Don't need the tone knob. Tone knob always stays on full. Um, pickups always on the bridge. Never need to use the neck for us. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how we run our guitars. Fairly simple. Fairly simple. Yep. Yeah. Nice easy rig. Still less to go wrong. <laughs> well, there's less to worry about on stage. Exactly. Right, where do I start? Yeah, keep it simple, stupid. That's what we like to embrace. Yeah, I'm a big advocate of that being the stupid part. Thanks for that, man. I really appreciate it. For more information on the guys, check out Amazing Suffer.com.au. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Nick. 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 Thanks, Nick.